Hey guys, how you doing? It's Tom. I'm back. Yes. I didn't get just a haircut. I got them all cut, man. Definitely. Amy cut my hair with a, you know, free of charge. <laughs> I like it too because it's starting to get hot here in the Philippines. It, it appears that rainy season is over, I think, okay? You know, you'll hear people talk about, ah, oh, rainy season is from here to here. Well, I've been here since June, and I've been here in the past, also in June, you know, like mostly December, January, but also in June. And I would tell you this, I mean, from what I can experience here, from what I can see, and I'm in Manila, the rainy season seems to be like July, August, September, October, and not, not really November. You know, I, I would just say those months are definitely sort of rainy season, and there's some overlap, okay, because there's also what we call storm season, right? Like, you know, monsoons, typhoons, and all that can happen. And even in, like, September, I would say October, and, and even November, occasionally in December, they have had storms, you know, big storms, big hurricanes or whatever, in uh in december but it's kind of rare you know like you know what i mean um so basically we're almost you know here we're at the end of november so and it's been sunny and the 10 day outlook here is like sunny 85 to 90 degrees very few days of where it's going to be small chance of rain you know so it's it's looking like we're clear of the rainy season which is nice so you got to wear a hat now when you go out, like me. It's this big bald spot I got, <laughs> you know. Uh, anyway, um, but yeah, the, the nice weather it starts basically, you know, December, and then January, February, March, you know. That's kind of like the, I think, more temperate, you know, where it's not quite as, it doesn't get up like sizzling hot, like 95 degrees or whatever, you know. And then when you're in that after that, like when you get into like, I guess, I don't know, April, May, June, it's pretty hot, you know, like very hot, you know, like even hotter than normal. And then it starts to, the rainy season can be hot too, you know, but it gets so, you know, it's, it rains fairly frequently. So then that sort of cools things down for a while, you know, so then the overall day isn't too bad, right? Um, but anyway, so... I wanted to talk about something. We, we went to a wedding, me and Amy and the girls. We went to a wedding of uh, Amy's, one of Amy's friends' sons, uh, got married, and and I knew the the couple. You know, I, I mean, I had met them. I met him before. I know once, or probably once or twice, I think. And so we, you know, so we went to the wedding, and I just noticed. I just thought I'd talk about some differences. You know. Um, like number one, and I think this is probably kind of a common thing in the, in the Philippines, you know, more common than it is in the U S in the U S we tend to have like weddings are usually Saturday, sometimes Friday, but it's usually like late afternoon, the wedding. And then the reception usually starts at like six or whatever, right. PM until like usually until midnight, at least, you know what I mean? Like that's usually when they start cleaning up the reception hall or whatever, you know, like, you know. Well, here it's a little different. I mean, I think here it's more commonplace to sort of have the wedding late morning and then have the reception sort of in the afternoon. You know what I mean? Like starting at noon or whatever. And then just, you know, and it's not going to be as long. It might be four hours or whatever, you know. Uh, and then, but then sometimes, at least for people that are, that can do it, you know, that are sort of in fairly close proximity to living near the groom and the bride, they could also have, they could continue the party, you know what I mean, at their house, you know, or their parents' house or whatever, right? So people will do that too, you know, people, some people will, close friends and relatives will maybe go to that as well, and then it could go into the night, you know, the late into the night, you know, with the karaoke and everything else, you know. But the reception itself tends to be, you know, frequently in the afternoon, you know, instead of like the evening. And then as far as like the customs are 
different, right? Like, I'm not going to talk about, you know, the church service was very, was sort of, you know, somewhat typical of, I guess, what you, what you would find in a, in, a, in a church service in the U.S., you know. Uh, there might have been a few differences, but I haven't been to a wedding in a while in the U.S., so, I mean, I, it didn't seem that different to me, you know. Um, but the, the, some of the customs are a lot different, you know, like, in other words, and just for my Filipino viewers, you know, like, uh, in the U S generally, okay, there's, there's sort of a custom where, you know, the, the father of the bride will pay for the reception. Okay. And then from, and then I think, uh, sometimes the father of the groom will maybe pay for the rehearsal dinner, which is something that they have like not to a couple of days or whatever before the wedding. And that's usually like maybe 20 people. That's like the close family and whoever's involved directly in the wedding, like groomsmen, best man, maid of honor, bridesmaids. You know what I mean? That You know, it's usually probably not going to be much more than about 20 people usually. <clears throat> and then sometimes the mother of the bride will buy the dress. You know, I mean, I don't know if that's a custom, but I mean, that frequently happens, I think, you know. Uh, you know, um, and then of course people bring money, people that go to the wedding or the, and the reception in the U S will bring money. You know, it's at least 50 bucks per person. Okay. And that might be more now, you know, and it could be a hundred bucks per person now, you know what I mean? Just because there's no set amount, there's no rule. They're not going to slap you if you bring, you know, 50 each, you know, nobody's going to like put you on TV and, oh, this person didn't bring enough money. But, I mean, you know, there's kind of a, a rule of thumb, you know what I mean? There's like a custom, you know. And uh, so it's, like I said, anywhere between $50 and $100, let's say, per person, okay. And that money usually winds up just going to the couple, you know, when they, you know, uh, for, so they can start their life together, you know what I mean? It's not like any of that money is going to go back to the father or the bride or anything, you know? I mean, unless they wanted to give him some, you know, like if he was uh, maybe not, uh, well, didn't have a lot of money or something. I don't know, you know. Uh, but then, and I'm sure it uh, happens occasionally in the U.S., depending on the parental situation of the bride, you know, whatever. Where sometimes maybe the bride and groom, especially if they're older, you know, they might even pay for some of it or whatever, you know. If they're like 35, 40 years old when they're getting married for the first time or something, you know, I mean, it's possible, you know, depending on the situation of the parents, you know. Um, now, here uh, in the Philippines, it, it's sort of the, the custom, I think, in general, right, is that, you know, the groom's going to pay for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, um, there's, you know what I mean? It's not like, unless you're, if you're talking about sort of wealthy families in the Philippines, right? Which, you know, I, I don't know. It might, that may be like maybe 10% of the Philippines or whatever, if that, you know, maybe, you know what I mean? Five to 10%, I would say, where they, they might do similar customs as they do in the U.S. where the father of the bride would pay for, you know, the reception or whatever. But as a rule, it's usually just the groom's kind of responsibility, you know, to sort of pay for that. Um, now, but the, do people, it's, but they also have a similar custom where, you know, people are going to bring money, whoever's going to the wedding and the reception, they are going to bring some money, you know what I mean? To sort of, that's going to wind up going to the bride and groom. And then there's another custom where they, the, the, the bride and groom will have us, will have sponsors, and it's almost like God, you're almost like a godfather almost, you know, type of thing where, you know, but, it, it, and then, so obviously the sponsors are going to bring more money than the rest of the guests. You know what I mean? The rest of the guests might bring a certain amount and then the sponsor is going to bring amount that's going to be, in my opinion, comparable to like what you might bring to a U.S. wedding, <laughs> to what anybody might bring to a U.S. wedding. You know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of a, that's a difference, right? And there, and, we're, and when we talk about sponsors, I mean, you know, you're, you're, there's not like 20 of them usually. I mean, you know, there's, maybe there's a handful, you know what I mean? There might be five, six, whatever, you know, somewhere between five and 10 
okay? Re, you know, like sponsors that are sort of, you know, that stand out or whatever, you know. Um, and like I said, they'll and they'll be named on the program. Like you'll be, you know, designated like, oh, you're a sponsor. You know, you'll be on the program and all that in the church, you know. And then also, if they're close, you know, like actual real, like close relatives or close friends, they can, they'll often speak at the reception. You know what I mean? Like toward the end of the reception, they might say a few words like, oh, you know, congratulations. I hope you have a great life together. And, you know, just whatever kind of well wishes that they want to talk about, you know, to the, to the new uh, bride and groom. Um, and so... So that's sort of different, right? You know, and, and I will sort of add to that, you know, because I mentioned godfathers. Like in the U.S., people will designate, not always, but, you know, especially if there's only one parent. Like I know when my mom died when I was 13, shortly thereafter, my dad had a friend of his become my godfather, just in case something happened to him. You know what I mean? If something happened to my dad, then what's going to happen to me, you know, I'm 13, 14 years old or whatever. So, you know, literally the Godfather had meaning, you know, like, hey, he's going to take care of me, man, you know, if something happens to my dad, you know. It's not like just some, here it's more of a, you don't really have the responsibility that you would have, you know, to be a Godfather necessarily, like the same responsibility as they have in the States. It's more like a financial type of thing, you know, where it's kind of like, yeah, you know, so you're going to give them money for Christmas and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like you're going to, and, and then sometimes people here will have more than like, you know, my girls got like more than one sort of godchild. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's more of a token of gesture type thing where it's just like kind of, a, yeah, here, you know, you're going to give those people money or whatever, uh, you know, for uh, Christmas and stuff like that, right? So that's kind of a big difference, right? Um, and then uh, what else is there? I mean, I was going to talk about, those are kind of the major differences, right? You know, um, the church ceremonies seem to be about you know, maybe a little bit longer than one in the U.S., but not much longer, you know. Um, and and it was on time, too, by the way, you know, like, because we, we were right on time. We were, like, right at, you know, 11. It started at 11 a.m., and because of traffic, we got there, like, 11.02 or something, you know, whatever. And it was, like, they were getting ready, you know, like, it was already starting, you know, like. And uh, so it's not like... You know, oh, it's oh, Filipino time. You know, it starts at eleven. It means that you know you could be there eleven thirty. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, just be there on time. You know, for for that. You know, what I mean, that's something that's like not going to be. That's going to be strict adherence, I think, because you know you're paying for a certain amount of time. You know, you got to obviously pay something to the church or whatever. You know, uh, you know. And then, uh, and, if, and the same thing with the reception, you know, you're going to pay for that allotted time, you know, four or five hours in the afternoon or whatever. And it's probably going to be cheaper too, right? You know, like that's probably another reason why they tend to do it that way because it doesn't cost quite as much as if you're trying to rent a space for the evening, you know, for five hours or whatever, six hours. So, you know, it's some of it's financial, you know, but, um, but yeah, it was nice. But and I will say, as a sponsor, though, I, we got gifts too, though, from the bride and groom. So I got a nice gift from them, you know. Um, and then not cheap either, you know. What I mean, it was you know like a, a decent, you know, <laughs> it was a nice gift, you know. Um, so, but anyway, it, you know. Um, so I just wanted to talk about that, and then I think that's about it for this video. Um, I got a few more coming up here. Um, yeah, so I'm going to crank them out, you know, sometimes I go three, four days between them and, and sometimes I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I got to really think hard, like, what do I want to talk about? You know, like sometimes you kind of have these little air, uh, little brief periods of time where you kind of run out of ideas, like, oh, what the heck should I talk about? You know, um, so sometimes it takes me a little while because I got other stuff going on too. You know what I mean? It's like, 
I do this kind of as a hobby. I enjoy it, you know. I enjoy the feedback I get from you guys, you know. So, so keep it up, you know. Like, uh, don't hesitate, you know. Comment, like, you know, if you like uh, the content, and uh, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I really appreciate it. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day.